Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your homeboy, Lee Sean Anderson, and I'm back with another video reaction. This is a video by Nonstop Sports, the most savage NBA fights of all time. I know football season is, is still here and it's active, but personally, basketball is my favorite sport. <laughs> I like the way they dribble up and down the court. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's, I just want to see uh, some of these uh, basketball fights, these NBA fights. Why not, you know, dunk on somebody and, and knock their head off at the same time? NBA players today can get texts for taunting because they stared at someone with a mean face without even saying anything. It's no wonder that players who played in the 80s and 90s wow, that's are a soft now. This video will have a list of some of the biggest fights in the NBA Ooh. history. The ones that made the league change its rules and institute the quote-unquote softness in the league that we see today. While you may have your opinion about this and like the 90s style better, it's hard to argue the results because the NBA is now more popular than ever. But if you do want to remember some of the most physical times when players truly didn't like Oh, each man, it's at the palace. Yeah, you got to put that on here. Are the biggest fights in NBA history. Malice at the Palace. Yeah, see? This moment had several different ingredients that got mixed together in such a way. This should have been number one. A of violence, chaos, and a ton of bad press for the whole NBA. Even was fans was getting it. The court prior to the fight was a prelude six months in the making. Indiana and Detroit were two teams with some... Just imagine if LeBron run up on you while you talking all that trash Indiana in the crowd. In the and he hits you with a nice two-piece. On their path to the NBA title, which they won against the Lakers in 2004. So there was already a certain level of animosity between the Man, teams. Man, I'm pulling up in a courtroom in November 19th, in a stretcher, dog. I'm getting all types of money. Indiana had a stack LeBron James. And court. they were ready to revenge the loss in the I'm playoffs sorry. from the year before and send a message on a nationally televised stage. And they did precisely that. The Pacers dominated the game. And Ron Artest was leading the way with his defensive presence and physical play. With less than a minute left to play, Indiana led by 15 points. The game was basically over, and everybody was looking for the clock to run out. Everybody except Ron Artest. Artest, one of the most temperamental players in the league at the time, waited for an opportunity to punch somebody and release the tension he felt throughout the game. When Ben Wallace attempted to score near the basket with 45 seconds left in the game, Artest clipped him with a hook that even some boxers would have looked twice. It was blatantly obvious that this was not a basketball play, and Ben Wallace retaliated. Yeah. He shoved Ron with all the force from his 260-pound body, and a scuffle ensued. Other players intervened, and after some pushing and shoving, it seemed like it would end there. After all, we've seen stuff like this countless times before, but it was far from over. somebody threw that cup at him. still mad. So he threw a towel at Artest, who was lying on the scorer's table, trying to calm himself down. This wasn't his first fight in the league, and he had shown signs of psychological fatigue during games before. When the Pistons fans saw Wallace throw something at the lying Artest, they started doing the same. Cups, popcorn, and yep. whatever else they had started flying towards the court in Ron's direction. John Green, a Pistons fan who was near the court, had a precise aim that night. Maybe a little too precise. He threw a cup of coke with ice he was drinking at Artest and hit him in the chest with it. That was the trigger. And the moment yeah, he ran up in that door. Ron Artest got up and started climbing towards the place where John Green was standing. A six foot seven inch tall basketball player with a 250 pound muscular frame, mad as a raging bull, was running. <laughs> <running. laughs> <laughs> So he chose so to in the blue. the coke fluid. He passed John Green and started choking the teenage kids standing close to him. Then all hell broke loose. Stephen Jackson came up to the This thing, well. he's so immature that you did some stupid stuff to a basketball player. Then a basketball player, Green player Green think it's your son. And and your son get whooped. whooped. With teammates Jackson and O'Neal now in the stands, That's Artest crazy. got back on the court, and another fan confronted him there. Bah! Artest punched <laughs> him as well. After that moment, police started pushing the players towards the locker rooms through a huge mass of fans who also got down to the court. Pistons fans weren't really darlings either, as they were throwing more and more cups, liquor, and even chairs towards the players as they were escorted away from the court. 
It all went from bad to terrible to an absolute nightmare. Players who were temperamental and weren't strangers to hard fouls got into a fight that turned into a big scuffle. One cup of soda and a very precise aim from a fan that put gasoline to that fire. And it all resulted in the ugliest moment in NBA history. The game holds the record for most suspensions given by the NBA. John Green and Ron Artest were both convicted of assault. It was a bad, bad night that forced the league to make some rule changes regarding hard fouls, fights on the court, and suspensions. It was an end of the bully ball era that continued from the 80s and the 90s. The malicious event at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Detroit got dubbed the Malice at the Palace, and it will be remembered forever. Hopefully, it stays the worst incident in the NBA. Heat versus Knicks. Morning versus Johnson. Oh, that was on morning. Playoffs game four. He was a this bad boy back in the day. Stemmed from years of intolerance between two players and teams with playoff history that hated each other. Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson were both big, physical dudes who used their large frames for defense, offense, and a bit of dirty work as well. Yeah. The dirty was on full display during the 1998 NBA playoffs when the Heat visited the Knicks in the Madison Square Garden. During the last play of the game, Miami's Tim Hardaway attempted a three-point shot that would have brought Heat to just two points between the Knickerbockers if it got in. Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson were standing underneath the basket, fighting for position and pushing each other in the process. When Hardaway's shot missed and the Knicks got the rebound, Morning realized they had just lost the game and felt the freedom to release his frustration with Johnson and he let it fly. One swing by Morning and then one by Johnson and then another one by Man, they, they can't fight though. Boxers, because none of the hits fully connected. Man. But that was also the reason why the fight continued. They look like the WWE out there. The other guy, and they really wanted to. Everybody rushed in to stop the fight, including players, referees, and coaches. Jeff Van Gundy, New York's head coach at the time, <laughs> he was hanging on their to the fight too and got pushed to the floor. Man. What made this fight iconic is the image of Van Gundy, who was a man of modest five feet and nine inches, trying to hold on to the leg of a seven-foot Alonzo Mourning in order not to get squashed on the ground like a cockroach by men much larger than him. It was as comical as well as health. violent. Johnson and Mourning both got suspended for two games, which also shows how the NBA was much more lenient with fights in that era. None the of those Celtics fight. versus Bill Lambeer. Bill Lambeer was a member of the 1980s bad boy Detroit Pistons and one of the dirtiest players ever. He was known as a guy that will instigate things on the court, mask punches as common fouls with no intention to make a real defensive play, and try to hurt guys in general. One of his general hobbies was setting his feet under a jump shooter's landing area so they would roll an ankle if they landed on Lambeer's feet. Nobody in the league liked him, except Pistons fans. The Celtics hated him the most because they were bitter rivals with Detroit. And Lambeer had several non-basketball highlights during those matchups. Both Robert Parrish and Larry Bird had separate fights with Lambeer during the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons. In Game 4, Lambeer slammed his body into Larry Bird with more eagerness and force than Bird thought was necessary to stop him from scoring. Both him you and don't want to close lines. Yeah. To the ground, what? Where Bird started throwing punches at Lambeer. The commenter said, I don't remember ever seeing Larry Bird getting as angry as I saw him there. And he was right. Bird usually never responded like this. And at that moment, he was absolutely furious and wanted to keep fighting even after the refs and other players stepped between him and Lambeer. Bird ultimately got ejected from the game. In the next game of the series, usually calm and collected center Robert Parrish Dang, he picked up the Bird stopped in game four. The chief decided that he had had enough of Lambeer's antics and punched him straight in the face with the <laughs> approval and cheers of the entire it, crowd. Bill Simmons mentioned he in the interview with Bird that, that he never felt anyone hated as much as the whole city of Boston hated Bill Lambeer that night. Chris Childs versus Kobe Bryant. Kobe is known as one of the toughest. Oh, this is that dude that has two piece play. Kobe. When he was still a young buck with an afro, not everybody knew that yet. Chris Childs tested it out with two punches that landed on Kobe's head and got the young Mamba so angry it took Man. two referees to hold him down, which they barely managed to do. Yeah, because he just got hit with a two-piece. Another brawl got into the stands, albeit it was the courtside seats. The year was 2006, and the actors in the play were all the players from both teams. After a hard and unnecessary foul at the end of the game, there's definitely a pattern here. Yeah, that's stupid. Several fights broke through, and everybody was fighting everybody at one point. Kermit Washington versus Rudy Tomjanovich. 
Remember that we told you that Morning and Larry Johnson were bad boxers? Well, this wasn't the case for Kermit Washington, who connected a mean right hook to Dude. Tom Janovich, which sent him to the hospital and wow. ultimately ended his career. There wow. was a puddle of blood after Rudy fell to the floor. And later on, we found out that he had spinal fluid leak out from the punch and could have died then and there. Wow. Yikes. Julius Irving versus Larry That's Bird. not even funny. Good Two of the best players in the game going hard at each other in the fifth game of the season. That's a prime example of a difference in eras. Could you imagine LeBron and Steph Curry trading punches in the middle of the court now? Steph would be a wash, boy. Were playoff rivals. LeBron, During that time, LeBron would it was a regular up. occurrence to punch playoff rivals. A legendary photo of Bird and Irving, both holding each other's throat, was a souvenir from the game. Shaquille O'Neal versus Charles Barkley. This one is a fight that got extremely famous because it involved some of the most iconic NBA players ever, who also happened to work side by side every Thursday on Inside the NBA. The most comical duo that covers the NBA got into it in 1999, and it pretty much described the entire relationship of Chuckster and the big fella. They fought. Hey man, if Shaq would have landed that punch, Charles Barkley paid. It's still pretty much. Yeah, the same it would be cursed for Charles Barkley on the show. A love hate relationship. Man. If Shaq would have landed that punch, Charles Barkley would have been sleeping really, really well. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it with this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's any videos you want me to react to, let me know in the comments below and I will react to them. All right. Now have a blessed day. You have a good one. Be safe. Drink lots and lots of water. And I'm out. Deuce, deuce. Uh.